Hello everyone, welcome to John Evans Fishing Adventures, I'm having as usual. Today is going to be a little bit of a different episode, so uh, let me just give you guys a little, uh, a summary of the, uh, what was going to be the next few videos. So I was going to post um, Chain Pickerel Hunt 2, which was going to be day 2 of fishing for a chain pickerel. But after trying to edit it and failing pretty badly, I just kind of felt like I had deja vu from the first episode, and I'll explain that today. Um, but again, it didn't feel like it had a good storyline. It felt repetitive to the first episode, so I thought, you know what, scrap it. So now, then I went on to the next set of footage, which was a Father's Day, um, where my dad and I were going out for new species. And it was an amazing day of fishing, and a pretty, uh, pretty sketchy one, too. Um, however, I did not film much that day, and so I tried to do some narration and it was just bad. I did not like it. I did some of the, of the narrations on my phone. It just did not look good. The quality wasn't good. It felt choppy to me. And, you know, I want to improve the quality of the videos on this channel. And so if I don't feel like it's up to my standards, I just don't want to post it. So instead of making more of a storylined episode that's just kind of meh, I'm going to make more of a summary episode like I'm going to today to kind of summarize what was going to happen in those two episodes so that way we can move on to some really exciting episodes that are going to be coming up soon. So let's start out with Chain Pickerel Hunt 2. Um, in this episode we were going to go the ne very next day after Chain Pickerel Hunt 1 to go back to the same location in search of the Chain Pickerel. As Ox, I'm not going to say the species. <laughs> um, so we went out, pretty much the same plan, catch a chain pickerel, but I had some new baits. I would brought an extra rod, a medium action rod, with a little bait called a Berkeley Havoc Sick Fish, which I thought would be a great little swim bait that would be weedless, that might catch a chain pickerel. Turns out I didn't catch a single thing. Um, the only fish I caught that day was a bluegill, very nice sized one, on an inline spinner, which I'll show you right now. Oh, got one. Oh, this is a nice, nice fish. Not bad sized. So, oh, just a bluegill. Yeah. Uh, there was a really big bass right here, but uh, he didn't want my lure. Whew, that thing is huge. That's one, right? Yeah, that's a bigger one. <laughs> Well, just caught the first fish of the day, a jumbo bluegill. I mean, the thing is, the thing is huge. I'm saying about six, seven inches. Gorgeous fish. He's peeing all over me, though. Ah, look at that thing. Whew, that was a monster. Um, that was pretty much it. Other than that, we did see one chain pickerel, um, pretty much plain as day, and I threw a gulp minnow at it, and I spooked it, like the first episode. So... That's pretty much what happened in Chain Pickerel Hunt 2. Okay, so now let's jump to the Father's Day special. I don't know what the exact title was going to be, but it was the day of Father's Day when my dad and I went fishing. Um, so, we first started out by going to a university pond um, in search of bullheads. I only had, at the time, one bullhead on my list, and I needed some, and I saw that there were some in this pond, and I wanted to see what kind they were. So we had started out the day, we had to do a little bit of hiking to get to the spot because there's not good parking, and we set up some rods, a, a rod, and I uh, caught a few little fish, and I'll show you that right now. Well, this is probably the smallest green sunfish I've ever caught. Cast it underneath this bridge to see if there's a bullhead, and that's what I caught. Well, uh, this guy's been out of the water for maybe about 30 seconds, so I'm going to get him back real quick. So, cool little catch. Another dink. So that's two green sunfish. 
Oh boy, this guy. He got it a bit deeper. I'm gonna just kind of rest him in the water and the. Okay, that was another green sunfish. These guys are pretty much demolishing this little bait. I want to probably take in one more cast with this hook, and if I get another dink, I'll probably switch to a larger hook in hopes of keeping the dinks off. I might lose more worms that way, but how else am I going to catch a bullhead when all these little dinks are around? Well, it's a dink fest, for sure. There we go. Okay. General consensus, there is a ton of dink bluegill in here, specifically three that I have caught. So I think I want to move on, maybe see if I can find a slightly, you know, uh, better spot that might have some larger fish. But first off, I'm going to switch to a larger, a uh, larger hook. Because these little guys, even though they're small, they've got kind of, they're, they're green sunfish. They've got large mouths. So even though they're like two inches, they can eat a larger hook. So I'm hoping I can keep them off by, uh, you know, using a larger hook. So, we'll see what happens. And so, we were mostly just catching dinks. Um, so then, as I said, I upgraded to a larger hook. And then I we went in search of bullheads at the upper pond. And it didn't take long before my dad caught one. And I also caught a bluegill, which I'll show you right now. Well, dad caught the first bullhead of the day, a very small one. Now I've got a bluegill on the line. Well, let's pull him out and put him in the photo tank. Well, we got farther out. We got to cast farther out. Okay. Well, we got two fish that we need to take care of. So let me take a picture of this bluegill real quick. And so then I was after my bullhead. Now it turned out it was a black bullhead, which I kind of showed in those clips. Um, which I already had, but I didn't have a good picture of one, so I thought I would still catch one just to add a pic better picture to my list. And while I was fishing for it, something pretty unfortunate happened, and here it is right here. So yeah, it was a pretty big bummer that I face planted my $200 camera into gravel. So yeah, that was nice. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to send off my Canon camera to a factory to get it repaired. If it's not too expensive, I'll probably just get it repaired. If it's too expensive, I'll just get another camera. They're only about $100, $200. Bucks, um, and or I might just get um, something cheaper, maybe a bit more rugged. I don't know. Uh, but nonetheless... Um, it was now time to go to the second pond. Um, now, like I said, I did not have my main camera anymore because it was broken. Um, I didn't want to actually get out my GoPro that day. I just wanted to have a relaxing day of fishing at that point um, after breaking my camera. Um, and, you know, my dad's phone's kind of inaccessible. You know, it's just kind of an annoyance to uh, use, and which I'm using right now. Um, and my phone has a terrible camera, and that's what stopped this video from being in production. Um, the old video. Uh, but anyway, so we had gotten to the new pond, the chain pickerel pond that we've been going to, and I was after bullheads, my dad was after carp, common carp, um, but um, after I had casted my bullhead rod out, in um, while we were walking to the spot, I had seen some micros in a tiny little stream, um, and so I was set up a tanago rod, and I went over, and in about five to seven minutes, I caught a new species, which I will display on the screen right now. 
and it is a mountain red belly dace. I'm not exactly sure what the scientific name is right off the top of my head, but it's probably on the screen. So yeah, that was a really cool fish species to catch. It wasn't in full coloration, sadly. Uh, they are starting to get some red markings on them now, but um, at the time, they were mostly just kind of not colored at the time. Um, but anyway, I did get it on my fish species list. Um, and actually, before that, I keep forgetting that I also caught a bluehead chub before that, which was not a fish that I had on my list yet, which I'm displaying right now. That was species number 46. The dace was 47. Um, and the bluehead chub was actually in the pond. It was a little school, and it took me about 10 minutes to uh, sneak up to them and get one to bite. Um, and so, yeah, it was a cool fish to catch, and it added another one to my list. So after catching two new species of fish that day, um, and after going after those micros, I then proceeded to throw a little minnow underneath a float, like a float jig rig, um, for chain pickerel. I did not get a single fish on that. So then I joined my dad in search of carp and whatever else would bite a pack bait rig. And I had casted out some rods for him, and one was getting a bite. It was a, it looked like a, a bluegill bite, turtle bite. Um, but it started to get a bit more aggressive, and it was even able to uh, turn on the alarm. Um, figuring it was probably like a large turtle or something. Um, I picked up the rod and felt it to see if it was still on there. And when I set the hook... I then started dragging something in, pulled it through the lilies, and it turns out it was a brown bullhead. Um, this is my second main brown uh, bullhead species on my list, which is number 48. Um, and I do have some video of that. He tried to bite me. Well, guys, the second bullhead up for, of the day for me. Oh, and it's a new species. And right? it's a new species. Look. This is a brown bullhead. I'm going to do something. As you can see, he's got whitish to black barbels, but this is what gives it away. Look at the brown modeling on yep. the fish. Yep. That tells you that this is a brown bullhead. Beautiful little fish. Got a mean face to him, and he will bite me if I try to put my finger in there. So let me take a picture real quick. So as you saw, I caught very first brown bullhead. Um, but then after that, um, we had heard some thunder, and so we started to pack up, and right as we were pretty much completely packed up, a huge thunder roll just, like, deafens the pond, um, and along with it was, um, some lightning, so it was, like, right on top of us, because, you know, lightning, thunder, mixed together, it's, like, right on top of you. I mean, it was so close, I could feel electricity in the air, so we sprinted out of there, it then started pouring, and so I was just a mess once we got back to the car. I was soaked. Thankfully, my GoPro wasn't soaked. That's that's a good thing that I wasn't. I didn't have my GoPro filming because otherwise it probably would have died, which would have been bad. So that was pretty much the episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this wasn't an actual like like vlog style episode, kind of like the chain pickerel hunt video. Um, sadly, because my camera kind of you know hit the ground. Um, these next two videos that I'm going to be posting, which are going to be pretty cool actually, um, these next two videos will be only filmed on my GoPro, but hopefully they should look good. After that, I'm going to try to get back into the swing of things filming with this phone, and hopefully I can get my camera back repaired soon, because it's going to be really weird readjusting to using a phone. But anyway guys, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, um... Can't wait for the next episodes, and of course, tight lines, and keep fishing. I don't know, this is weird.